this. Your students uh, speak a whole lot about you. Miss Nigeria competition. Yeah, I said, you know, let's pick them up. Uh, let's take them back to Nigeria and let's teach them a different kind of job. It is often said that when you train a man, you train just a person. But when you train a woman, you train a whole nation. I'm so you know, glad to be a woman because it means that I have a lot of influence in creating not just a nation, but a better nation. Now, what happens when I have the opportunity of sitting down with personalities who have not just uh, trained the likes of me, but the likes of a whole lot of people who have made this nation thick? Today, I have one of such personality, a teacher of all teachers, a woman who's been described in a whole lot of ways, even though I fondly want to call her mom, because uh, it's not just because she shares the same name with my mother, but she symbolizes a whole lot of things that mean value added for me. I will be introducing my guest, who is an exceptional educationist, but that will be after this time out. Don't go away. I don't think in gender boxes at all. I just get on with it. A man that would dare to ask the wife, who do you think you are? That is a real man. In fact, our husbands are our firstborns. The husband needs more attention than even the children. It's not only about work. It's not only about family. They need to take the time to look after themselves. And we don't. We don't do that. They took my money. I paid every fees. I never asked to be hoisted as a governor. I wanted to be allowed to go out there and contest for the position of uh, uh, governorship candidate first. There's nothing greater than looking back and seeing that while you were aspiring, you were able to inspire others. Empower to women. Yes. We need to course. have more women, more multitaskers around Nigeria to get Nigeria working. Definitely. All right, the program is The Woman. Of course, you know my name is Elizabeth Abai and permit me to welcome in a grand style the first deputy permanent delegate to Nigeria, uh, of Nigeria to United uh, UNESCO in Paris. And uh, the first of a whole lot of things, including the first principal of uh, Federal Government College somewhere in Lagos. And I know you also uh, a principal at it point, 1977 or so uh, in uh, Queens College or, or, or something. And uh, we'll get to pass through that river. But let me quickly tell them who you are, Mrs. Theresa Chukuma. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to have you seated with me in the studio, ma'am. Thank you. You know, a whole lot of people, when your students were calling, speaking to me about you, and I, I was just smiling. But I'd like to know, you know, they say teachers are the most important element in a child's life. Do you feel completely fulfilled being a teacher? That is, uh, in fact, I don't even know how to describe it. You know, you decide to be a teacher, the, sometimes the community may not even be appreciating what you're doing, but right in you, you get the sense of satisfaction. Because if it's in a secondary school, for instance, you teach a child who is like 11 years old, 12 years old, then when they leave school, graduate, and you see them like 20 years later, they have become something else, something bigger than you ever thought. And it is so satisfying because for teachers, what they want, want is to see their children grow to be bigger than they are. And that is what I have experienced right through my life. You know, you make me um, think of the farmer who sees his crop, you know, coming out from the seed and then, you know, growing sometimes even taller than the, the farmer himself. And then he's reaping out of it. It's quite fulfilling. But does that go to say that um, truly the reward of teachers are in heaven? Or do you have a lot of it here on earth? Well, we used to believe that the reward of teachers is in heaven, as the saying says. But... 
I am now convinced that the reward of a teacher can be right here on earth. That's beautiful. Because seeing those children, and then even, let me mention this being in Abuja these few days. Being in Abuja these few days, I met some of my students. I taught in Federal Government College, Lagos, Queen School, Enugu, where I started teaching in 1959. And then King's College, Lagos, when during the Biafran War, I was asked to go there and teach geography because they didn't have any geography teacher. Many of them I couldn't recognize because they have grown to be men and women in very high positions, you know. Then they come to me, oh, you taught me geography in so, so, so place. <laughs> and I'm looking at them. Some of them even are beginning to have gray hair like me. <laughs> You know, it's so satisfying. <laughs> that, to me, is a reward on earth. You know, um, my mom was a teacher, like I told you earlier, before we started. And incidentally, she shares your name too, Theresa. And um, when she retired, but I, growing up, I noticed that some people will meet me on the road and they want to beat me. And I'm like, what's it? I don't even know who you are. So your mom gave me so much beating. But the truth is... <laughs> But the truth is that I enjoyed the beating because it made me who I am. Yes. That it, it brings me to the question of discipline in school. Were you uh, that very uh, tough person? What was the magic? Because your students seem to connect so well with you, even as of today. Yes. When I decided to teach, or even before I decided to teach, I said to myself, can I teach? Will I have the patience? and all that because I never used to have patience for slow learners. You know, like in class, because I was good in mathematics and the teacher says, go and show so -so -so person how to do it. Mm. I will explain it the first time. If he or she doesn't get it, the second time my voice will go up, <laughs> will start okay. going up. So I didn't know I would be able to teach. But when I decided to take it up as a profession, I was surprised because when I started in London after, during uh, the period I was doing my postgraduate diploma, and they sent me to different schools, nursery school, modern school, grammar school, I started loving children. And I knew in my heart that that is what I should do. So I was, I was a disciplinarian, but there is a way I talk to children by share looking at them and they will immediately you know i don't know that's one of the things that god gave me i don't like beating children i don't think they will learn by you know beating Spanking. and all that i have other forms of punishment either giving them a book to read and write an essay <laughs> on that book, <laughs> or something or learning spelling from so many pages huh. I, let me give you an example. I went to Kaduna 2015. I was invited by the Nigerian Academy of Education to receive a fellowship award of the academy. And one professor in the audience, hmm. young man, you know, came to me and said, Oh, Mrs. Chukuma, you taught me geography in King's College. And I was like, well, I didn't recognize him, you know. The name, you know, rang a bell. He said, oh, I remember there was once something I never even can forget, that I gave them an assignment and I was going around the class, seeing what they were doing. It was map reading, seeing what they were doing, and that he was there drawing all sorts of nonsense and not doing what I give, and that I pulled his ear, <laughs> and that it was so painful, he said he would never do anything to annoy me again. He said, well, thank you for pulling my ear. That is why I'm a professor today. Because after that, I started listening. <laughs> you know, so there are ways of punishing children. Definitely, you definitely. Listen. It doesn't have to be beaten. <laughs> the basic thing is um, you get results. Yes. And when we talk about results, you generated them in large numbers. Thank you for that. Thank but I'd like you. to share your experience, you know, as um, a principal, you know, government, um, different schools actually. Yes. I know you were there in Queen's College, certain government schools and all that. What are the peculiar difficulties teachers 
seemingly have, you know, impacted knowledge to people. You did well. What are the difficulties they often have? Um, part of it is if you don't have good teachers. Because as a principal, you're not teaching them directly, but you're managing the teachers that are teaching the various subjects. So first of all, if they send you bad teachers, it's so difficult. You know, you spend more energy managing the teachers than running the school. So that used to be one challenge. But I was fortunate because in federal government colleges, mm -hmm. the federal minister of education mm -hmm. was good in sending teachers to the school. So you don't sort of get too many bad teachers. When I say bad teachers, some of them who may be qualified but are not interested in what they are doing. Exactly. You know? So interest plays role in oh being a good goodness. teacher. Interest plays role, you know, and these days at times you see some children who have been going around after graduation not having a job and then you say to them, uh, what are you doing, what job are you doing now? He said, well, I'm managing teaching till I find a better job. That's not good. You know, that type of teacher cannot drive home what he or she is supposed to do. You can't manage teaching, and then immediately you find a better job, you leave it. That's not good. That's not good. It's important we have interest and then um, have it just abundantly like you did. Now, um, at a certain point, you were, uh, in fact, I mentioned earlier, the first of a lot of firsts, you were the first uh, deputy uh, delegate to uh, UNESCO yes. on behalf of Nigeria. Yes. And I'm wondering, how did that come about and what experience did you take out, out of it? Okay, when Nigeria decided to open the, uh, the office, in UNESCO. I was in the Federal Ministry of Education. At that time, I was in charge of foreign scholarships. But one day, the permanent secretary called me and said, oh, that um, they were discussing whom to send to Paris to represent Nigeria in UNESCO. And the, that, that, you know, the majority of the senior staff the directors, public minister, that they kept pointing at, at me. So I said, me said yes, that what they wanted was an officer who works hard, an officer who doesn't need much supervision, an officer who can take decision right there when it is necessary mm -hmm. and doesn't have to, you know, wait for Lagos. To call back. So I didn't know I was, you know, in my performance that this type of um, this thing had shown. So that's how they chose me to go. And I went, you know, with all my children. They paid our fare and went to Paris. And um, it was a very good job, very challenging job. <laughs> and I was there for three and a half years before coming back to Nigeria. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And um, you actually trailed a lot of um, a line for a lot of people. At a point, you turned to be the director of education here. And um, amazing job it was. But sh coming from the background of the director of education, I don't know, education at that time and now, it's uh, for me seemingly not too, um, it's a bit similar, but not too similar. I'd like to know, where did we get it wrong? Because I know you're an expert in education. I think we may have gotten it wrong in one or two places. One of it, I think, is the quota system. Quota system? Quota system. Okay. You see, there is nothing wrong with getting everybody to participate in the, you know, management of either schools or whatever, or in the running of the government. But people have to be sifted, you know, and put where they Long. qualify, where it is known that they will be able to perform. But just to say, oh, we need directors, 
um, because state this is here, state the other one is there, so we will need this other state to be here. It, that's, it doesn't go with, you know, education. I don't know about other ministries. But in education, you have to choose somebody who fits into that position so that when you call yourself a director, you'll be able to, you know, manage all your staff, plan uh, programs, and make sure you succeed, not just sit there as a figurehead, you know. So that's where I think some of these things didn't quite go right. So if you remove it, you could help improve the quality of education yes. we have in Nigeria. Because the truth is, back in the days, uh, a standard six person mm. uh, is as good as almost a university graduate yes. today. Even the handwriting. The handwriting, the yes. The six person, where you see it, you know, is good. And when they speak, they speak well and they behave well. But today, even graduates cannot claim that. That's not good. Mm. All right. I, I wish I would talk more on your um, professional life. We'll get back to that. But I'd like to know, really, um, like I told you earlier, my parents were pretty much like you, my mother, educationist. And growing up in her house, it was both fun and uh, a lot of discipline. In fact, sometimes I thought it was excess, you know. <laughs> too much if you wanted tea and bread they'll ask you to spell it and you must get it right before you get it that's the much i got <laughs> now would your children speak the same of you were you that uh, strict it's funny because where you know like celebrating my birthday mm -hmm. and uh, friends come along and the children organize a party for me when some of them get up they talk about me you know being so strict and all that you know it didn't occur to me i was very like strict <laughs> yes and uh, some would say ah she's very nice so but she can be too <laughs> you know you don't really for me it is good not to spare children when you know that they're either naughty or doing the wrong thing but when they're when they're okay there's you know you play with them but grandmas always, them. at grandma stage, everything softens down. How do you relate with your grandchildren? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> with my grandchildren, if my children try to be strict or want to beat them, I say, no, 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 you don't do that, please. This, you know, you're uh, right. And they will tell you, but when it was our turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Mama, you're, you mentioned your birthday, and I can't help but tell the world how old you are. 86 and you're still very strong still very vibrant i want to know what are you doing because a lot of us by the time it, the, it's uh, 50 the clock is going seriously down what are you doing right that um some of us should emulate well first of all i think it's the grace of god <laughs> that um, makes me you know continue to even have my two feet, you know, going one after in front of the other. Because I know I have relations, I have friends who are a little younger than myself, who are not moving as well as I'm moving. So I give God the glory. But the other thing is, I listen to my doctors as well. You know, if because uh, with the type of jobs I did, I accumulated a lot of stress. Even at one time in Queen's College, I had a stroke. And um, by God's grace, I recovered fully. I was going to say, it doesn't show at all. Fully, you know. So, I think, listening to the doctors, because when that thing happened, they told me I had to do physiotherapy for six months to strengthen all my nerves and all that. And I was going to lose you know, um, to, to do the exercises mm. and then they would tell me what I should eat, eat more fruits and vegetable and less starch so I would reduce the rice that I love so much and be eating more 
oranges and bananas and what have you. So just following the advice of my doctors, in, in other words, trying to eat well. As for exercises, I think I'm a bit lazy because they always say, oh, you must do a lot of exercises. Maybe because I've been such a busy person. By the time I finish with my pen, I'm even too lazy to get up to start doing ah. exercises. <laughs> but I think exercises it's good. Also very good. It's good. Now, before I let you go, I would like to know, what would be your advice to the modern day teacher? Well, they just have to take their work seriously. And as I used to say to some of my teachers, when I see the way, the, you know, their relationship with students, I'll say to them, if you cannot treat a child that you're teaching, you can't treat that child as your own, you should not be a teacher. Any child you're teaching should be like your own child. You make sure you take the interests of that child at heart. Some children are stronger than others. Some are maybe sickly. And you don't start punishing that child, you know, because the child is not performing like the others. You have to study the children and then, you know, treat them well. Just before I go, my director is on my neck, but I'd like to know, a lot of times, parents have always complained. At a point, when it was catching up with me, I complained too. Too much of homework and time with academic work. I mean, when I went to school, we closed school at 1.45. Yes. And we took our uh, lunch, we had siesta, we get up, we played. And then probably read a little, one hour, two hours in the evening. And we all passed our WAYEK at first sitting. Now, students, teachers are made to work till 6 p.m. And they still go home with bags, mm -hmm. laden with homework. What's the play? Because I know that education has a psychomotor, affective, mm -hmm. and a cognitive. Now, the cognitive is beginning to dominate. What's the resultant effect of this on the, out, the, the products? as a student? Well, actually, the, that amount of homework that children get, that parents now have to share. A lot of times parents do them actually. Yes. And it's a good thing that parents are educated now. Can you imagine in the days where many parents <laughs> didn't go to school, I if they send their children with that amount of homework, who would help them? <laughs> but I think what has happened is that the curriculum has widened. You know, if you remember when you were in school, mm -hmm. the subjects you were taught, and compare with what your children are doing now, they are doing a lot more than we did, you know, in those days. And so the homework has doubled. So it's not really the fault of the school, or the fault of the teachers, you know, for giving the homework. But will it affect the mental capacity of the students? No, it shouldn't. Okay. In fact, you see how wise the children are now. They can tell you all sorts of stories because apart from what they learn in school, they learn from television, they learn from, you know, and all that. And what is happening in Nigeria is not just Nigeria. In the U.S., I was with some parents who were complaining about homework that the children come back home with so much homework that they don't have time to relax or to rest and all that. So I think it's happening all over the world, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mom, for coming along. Thank you so much. But before I take leave of you, I would love to know, how do you relax? How do I relax? Now, what do you do when you want to relax? Well, um, I read a lot of, you know, newspapers, magazines, and I watch television, you know, there are programs that I like, and then news. I would go from NTA to AIT to CNN, you know, to catch up with the news almost hour by hour. You okay. know, well, by the time I finish all that and then have my lunch and siesta, the day is gone. Okay. You watch TV with the remote. 
<laughs> yes, so we should Can't be getting up. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you so much for coming. I, I have you. learned a whole lot, especially with the load of um, grand uh, uh, homeworks coming on our way. We'll have to find a way of tackling it. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, I say bye-bye to you. And I know that not just me, a whole lot of us have picked a lot from this um, uh, pace setter. A woman who has been described as teacher of teachers. And once again, she's done it. Someone once said that uh, she never lets any situation, you know, go by without impacting on people around. And I have learned, I believe you have to. And if you must, pick on what she said. Pick that which she said about dedication, especially if you're a teacher. And if you ask me, all of us are teachers because we have one person or the other around us who is learning. So we must show interest, we must show dedication in everything we do. I'll see you again. My name is Elizabeth and the program is The Woman. First of all, we have to go back to a writer who are very well known for you. teaching skills. Your students uh, speak a whole lot about you, Miss Nigeria Competition. I said, you know, let's pick them up, uh, let's take them back to Nigeria, and let's teach them a different kind of job. <laughs>